Hello there. We're going to do a class that will keep you on your back the entire time. That doesn't mean that it's a gentle class necessarily, or that it's for people that lack strength or balance. It's just another way of getting into some standing supine postures without having to worry about the balance required to be standing for a long period of time so you can get into new things in your standing poses. Little nuances you can't always tell when you're standing and worrying about you know, the strength in the legs and balancing and where your gaze is and things like that. We're going to use a strap. So if you don't have a strap, it's okay. You can use a long thin towel that you wrap up and then maybe take some ties along different parts of it to just keep it wrapped up. You can use a belt, really any type of belt is fine. Even a scarf, if you, you don't mind using your scarf on your feet, because that's where the belt will be most of the time. We're going to start seated. Ta -da! And let's take the option of a blanket folded like so, right, or a towel. Everybody should have a blanket of some kind. It doesn't have to be one of these Mexican blankets. It can just be a blanket. And taking it underneath here, sitting Japanese tea ceremony style. Be careful of your feet and ankles. If you have a hard time, the tops of your feet just don't like to flatten out yet. Take another blanket underneath that particular spot where your foot meets your shin bone and take it right across there and that'll help relieve the stretch. Otherwise, start with me. You're going to become immediately aware of the crown of your head and the soft palate of your mouth. So it's the tip of your tongue. Take that to the roof of your mouth gently. And just notice if it becomes harder to clench your teeth together when you have this position. So today I may reference the soft palate, the roof of your mouth, uh, I may reference the crown of your head, the back of the throat. Just be aware of where those places are. And if at any point you find yourself clenching your jaw or holding a lot of tension in your face, you can just take a gentle lift of the tongue to the roof of your mouth. Take the very tip. You don't have to press hard. And then release the tongue back down into the floor of the mouth and maybe even into the back. Uh, bring your mind's eye to the centers of your feet. And if you want, picture eyes in your feet. And take it in the middle of your feet between the arches. Bring your awareness there. And just for fun, use your imagination. Breathe into the bottom of your feet. All the way down into the eyes of your feet and picture every exhale lighting up the feet, inner ankles, behind the shins, inner thighs, and then two strips coming from the pelvic floor right along the sides of your spine, connecting into the breathing diaphragm, heart area, a little bit below the heart, and then lighting up all the way through the sides of your throat, into the roof of your mouth, and out the crown of your head. So every inhale lights you down to the eyes of your feet, and every exhale lifts you back up. And play around with engaging some of those muscles on the exhale. It's a light engagement. I'm talking 5%-ish. Heavy engagement might look something like this. You need to want that. We're looking for barely perceptible, if even the trained eye were observing you. Breathing using your nose as much as you can, bypassing the nose and using the mouth can have a lot of adverse effects on the body's functions, on the blood gases, on your constriction and opening of your capillaries. There's 
lots of things that your body does to operate more efficiently when you use your nose. Just do the best you can based on what you were given today in terms of your nasal cavity. We'll come out of this position. You may need to shake your feet out a little bit. You need to use the strap pretty much right off the bat, but first let's come into some spinal articulations. So the reason I'm like this is so you can see certain angles of the feet and such. It will start to come in more handy as we use the strap. Spinal articulations, let's take a block with us too, just in case. Now inhale, press into your feet, light up down to the eyes of your feet as your heart rises like a balloon. Your lumbar curve gets a little curvy. Don't make it unnaturally so. Breathe down to the pit of your belly. When you exhale, your body will deflate down towards the floor. Just let it deflate passively right now. Inhale, not just to the bottom of your belly, but inflate the back of your lumbar spine that's curving, so you're creating a little bit of space by pressing gently down into the base of the body. You can keep your arms by your side. I like to keep my hands down at my belly and even behind my back to make sure that I have a tactile point so I'm, when I breathe, it's not just down the front of my body, it's down the back and sides. And I'm doing a little gentle pushing. I know my lungs don't go down to the base of my body, but I'm just creating some gentle openness down in a space where gravity compresses us and where we compress ourselves very often unconsciously throughout the day as we grip our hips and our muscles down through the pelvic diaphragm, pelvic floor, very unconscious motions that we create when we react to certain things. And I've said it a million times, but I do believe driving is one of the worst activities for us to engage in because we just tense up in so many places. When you're driving in an area like a metropolitan place, especially on the East Coast, so many aggressive drivers. And if you aren't a little aggressive yourself, you won't get anywhere. So there has to be a counterbalance to that. All right, on your next inhale, fill up the heart. Remember, it's a balloon. Fill up the sideways, kidney, tailbone. And then as you exhale, feel the inner thighs light up and a little lift of the pelvic floor all the way up the sides of your spine, like two strings meeting at the sternum and then at the back of the throat. So now the, let the inhale be a little more passive. Let the exhale be slightly more active. As you exhale, you'll feel the psoas sort of start to draw the lumbar spine slightly forward and down. I like to visualize the lumbar spine lifting up out of the pelvis itself to create space. I know that this awareness and this style of movement has pretty much healed all my low back issues. I'm not saying that this is a cure-all for everybody and there, you know, everybody with low back issues. But I do know that just cultivating the awareness that some forms of yoga themselves don't cultivate enough awareness. If you don't take the responsibility yourself or you don't go to teachers that promote that, at some point you may get stuck in the practice where you feel that your body's not being healed anymore or there's more pain or discomfort or modifications than in the past. Maybe that you just want to develop more asana work that you can't quite get into. And you may lose that beautiful meditative feeling at the end during Shavasana. These are all stories many yogis go through over the years. Or you may be perfectly happy with your practice all of your life too. Which is a wonderful thing. Either way. Alright, so let's do a little more work here. Inhale, press into the backs of your shoulders, backs of your arms, feet. 
As you exhale, draw the inner thighs, hip creases deep in a little bit, and then lifting your hips off the floor through the front of your body to those two little strings from your inner thighs up to your breathing diaphragm. And then inhale, come down slowly. I like to come down with the whole back at first. Try to drop it all at one time. And the exhale is an articulation. And then I'll inhale at the top, release my glutes because they usually get involved for the first couple. And as I exhale, lifting, lengthening out of my pelvic floor, then I take it down one vertebra at a time. And how much you want to curl your tailbone is up to you. I know that that causes me issues, so I don't curl my tailbone a lot. And I don't recommend a ton of that, but there is a little coiling down at the base of your spine that you can use to activate movement and then you can release it a little bit or a lot once you find the full expression of your pose. So you're gonna do these spinal articulations at your pace. I use the exhale to move a lot because I feel like I can stabilize a little better on the exhale. Your inhales can have movement if you choose. Trying to articulate the spine one vertebra at a time. What I do is I'll sometimes count very quickly to an arbitrary number like 12 or 15, pretending like I can get into 15 different vertebra. You're going to miss your cervical, obviously, a portion of your thoracic. Your next exhale, lifting up to the tippity top, press into your inner thighs more, lift and spread your toes. Inhale, release your glutes as much as you can without your low back starting to feel like it's dripping down. And keep this engagement here, inner thighs, press into your inner feet, squeeze an imaginary beach ball with your shins. If this is bothering your low back at all, feel free to engage a little more of the pelvic floor. And if the glutes have to get involved, bring them in. Take the block underneath the sacral area. My block is medium height. You may want lower, so do what you need to do. Sacral area is below your waistline. If you have particularly loose SI area as I do, I take a wide block. You may narrow your block so it goes with the line of your body if you have some tightness there. Sometimes you can give yourself a little chiropractic adjustment too. I'm not recommending that you become your own chiropractor, but over time you may learn how to adjust yourself through yoga. I'm gonna stay here for a little bit. You can pause the video and stay longer. Start to stretch one leg out very gently like an inchworm with your foot. So really articulate your foot. It's going to help warm up your foot. Then articulate the foot back in. So little inchworm movements with your foot. You're just warming up your feet. And just notice how when your foot moves, how much communication is coming up your whole leg to your pelvis. And do you even feel communication up your hip side ribs? left chest, if you're doing your left foot, to your shoulder, your earlobe. When you're ready, take the leg out as straight as you can handle comfortably. Before I straighten my leg, I'm going to draw the outer hip into my socket and a little lifting of my left psoas, if I can. And then taking the foot back or keeping your foot out, Know your flexibility limits here and your low back compression. Start to articulate your right foot in and out. Warming up the foot, you may start to notice, as I am, that I need to cut my toenails. And I'm noticing that my right foot is already more mobile. You may have noticed this on one foot as well. It's just moving more. So I keep that in mind. Because what it means is when I start doing the rest of this practice, my left foot is going to need a little more attention. That's what it means to me. It doesn't have to mean that to you. So much open-endedness. Oh my gosh, what do we do with it? We think critically. That's what we have to learn to do. All right, I'm going to take my leg all the way out. You may only want to put one leg out at a time, so this is important. 
I'm going to roll my inner thighs towards the floor. That helps open up the space in the low back. And I'm going to lift the low belly in. This creates a much more comfortable position for me. I'm not sucking my belly back. I'm thinking of lifting the frontal hip points here, your asis or your oasis as I call it, and then draw it up. And that feels good to me. When I internally rotate my legs, I feel a little stretching here. Maybe you turn your feet out for a moment. Remember, that's going to compress back in your low spine. And turn your feet in. And notice how if you can find your frontal hip points, everybody's got different boniness and amounts of flesh. See what happens when you internally and externally rotate your legs. I'm going to bend my legs a little bit here, just so you know you don't have to do this with your legs straight. Just kind of notice where they are in space. Your legs externally rotate. What do your frontal hip points do? What I like to do is I like to keep my hands there. And instead of moving my hands with the hip points, I just keep them there in a fixed point, And I see where things move under my hands. For instance, if my palms are holding onto them, then where do the hip points move? It's very interesting. I'm not telling you there's a right or wrong answer because I want you to figure it out for yourself. All right, pressing into your feet, activating your inner thighs, and hammies, lift and release. All right, strappy strap time. Take your right knee into your chest, then your left knee. Keep them wide for right now. We're not going to quite go happy baby. I think we're going to have a bunny appearance soon. So just watch out. I'm going to loop-de-loop -loop a little bit here. You don't have to have a loop. I just do it. You really can just take your strap around here. So take it around. With, you got your transverse arch here. Take it up over so you're on the balls of your feet here. That actually feels good. Ooh. Like somebody's scratching my feet. Okay. So... <clears throat> Slide yourself a little closer to the wall. You may not be touching it yet, but get close. Take your leg in a lunge. So I don't know how you got here. However you strapped up, it doesn't have to be the way I did. See how my leg is out to the side of me? That's okay. You're going to do that. And press your left heel away from you. I'm going to see if you can see my foot. Uh, yes and no, not really. That's oh, a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to, for the sake of visuals, show you how my outer ankle, my heel side foot, is collapsing away from me. I'm going to try and pull it in. Now I feel a little more activation here. And I'm going to find activation in the left side, inner thigh, outer hip. Also, I'm going to show you what some people do with their toes. It's crazy stuff. Try to keep the toes pretty equally spread out. If you have trouble with that, I highly recommend just keeping your toes less spread and work on flexing your feet equally on both sides. Once you're able to stop collapsing on one side or the other, everybody has a different side, then you can start spreading the toes away, but not like I, I have to actually work to, to make it look funny. Keep your arm on the inside if you want. You can even use a block to support your arm. Now, point your left foot away from you like a dancer's foot. Roll the inner thigh towards the floor. Just notice what your pelvic half is doing on the left and the right. You can take your hand on the left side if you want. Now flex your foot again. Try and make sure it's equally flexed like you're standing on the floor. And turn your toe in while you're flexed. You, your leg might even move too. In fact, your whole leg should be moving. Turn your foot out like a duck foot. Just notice what your pelvis is doing. Turn in and out a couple times, and then let your foot get really floppy, really floppy, both of them actually. And now activate them both, flex them both. Just notice what happens when you flex your feet. Do you notice that the pelvis responds in a particular way? Take your strap in your left hand. This time, floint your left foot. So you're going to point the toe like a dancer and then pull the toes back to you like you're flexing. Okay. 
almost like um, almost like a, a dorsal, a, a plantar flexion, like you're standing on your tippy toes. Reach your right arm out. Cactus or straight is fine. It can be by your side too. Start to take the right leg over to the side. Let your left toes fall over too. Now consider your right foot. Is your outer foot collapsing? If so, try to draw it in. Notice if your knees and your toes, your middle toes, are not in line. How are you going to fix that? I wouldn't necessarily use the foot. I would use the pelvic area to fix that. But you can use the foot too and then just inform the rest of the leg. So here you are in a revolved lunge. If you choose, you can take the strap in the right hand, cross. Ooh, it's a long strap. And then start to snuggle your left arm on the outer right foot. Continue to keep that pressing in your feet as though you're standing on the floor. Now here's an interesting exercise. Press into your feet like you're actually standing, right? But don't straighten this leg too much. Just press into your foot. And then as you exhale, draw the legs in, lift the low belly, and start to feel that rippling of the muscular action. You can get a deeper twist. Inhale, press into your feet. Exhale, a little lifting, a little twisting with the navel. Maybe you get the heart more towards the sky. Inhale, and then exhale. You can stay here for a couple of more breaths. No doubt some of you are probably still in this position, especially if you're not used to doing twists, and you're like, how is her chest to the sky? Well, this takes practice, right? And this is going to preclude you from having to balance. Exhale, take a little puff of the low belly, the little mula bandha, take it up. But it's better than having to stand like that for two minutes, because most people can. I certainly can. Take your leg up to the side, and then take it in. Check for any clicking or popping in the inner thigh or outer hip area. And if that happens and you're not used to it and you don't know where it came from, make tinier motions. Go for a circle. Stretch your legs out. And tell me how your right leg feels compared to your left. Yes, you can speak out loud. I won't hear you, but you can always type it in comments, I guess. Time for the left leg. Hello, left leg. So any way you want to strap it up is fine. Hamstring flexibility could be an issue, so you may have to take it in. Okay, That's something you're going to have to figure out for yourself. But here we go. So you've got your right foot is active. Check your outer foot, your outer feet. Leg could be out to the side. And it could be way out to the side, too, especially if you're a little fleshy. It's fine. Not a big deal. Try to draw your outer right heel towards you. And the bend in this leg should be about 90 degrees and then maybe to 100 or so. But I see a lot of people just defaulting to a straight leg when they have the flexibility. And people that are scared of overstretching or really can't do it will be under, right? In which case, what do you do? you take the knee away from you so you can find something around 90 degrees to 100, okay? I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go less than 90 because you wouldn't really be standing like that. All right, point your right toe, flex your right toe, maybe right hand on the top of your oasis here. See what happens. And then flex your whole foot, heel away from you toes towards you, turn it out like a duck, turn it in like a pigeon, notice what the pelvic half does. You may even feel a little bony compression somewhere, like somewhere in the hip joint, maybe in the back or the sides. Check it out and point your toe again and now floint it. Take the strap in the right hand, make sure this outer foot is pressing back Taking it over to the right. Let the toes fall to the right side on your right leg. So I didn't show you this on the other side, but no matter. You can take a block 
and allow it to be your rest. You could even do this next to a couch or something to put your foot into a wall. There's infinite possibilities here. I couldn't go through them all. We'd be here forever. So I noticed that my outer foot collapsed. I'm going to draw it in. I'm still pointing. I'm going to inhale, press into my imaginary four. So this leg gets a little bit longer, and this leg doesn't necessarily get straighter so much as I feel like the strap is being pulled away from my hand. And then as I exhale, I'm going to scissor the legs in, and that should automatically engage the bunda, pelvic floor, sides of low spine, and you can twist a little deeper. So I'm using the core to activate the twist. <clears throat> and again, some of you may not be able to get your back flat here, and that's fine and dandy. Use your next inhale to prepare. Exhale, draw in, put into your body. Release and extend. How does your left leg feel in comparison to your right? Let's inchworm it to the wall. It's just a good way to get things moving too, in my humble opinion. And then we're gonna take all of this lovely stuff to the wall. Again, 90 degrees is kind of your friend. You can certainly be further away. Don't be closer to, unless you, for some reason, feel you absolutely have to be closer. So as I press into the wall, I'm gonna inhale, lift, exhale, draw the inner thighs. Like there's a little zipper here and the zipper kind of comes out in twos. You don't have to go this high. You don't even have to lift at all. Inhale. I'm going to stay here and find the connection between the eyes of my feet, the back of my skull, the roof of my mouth. We're going to see if I can feel a full connection there. Like there's space in every little vertebra. And I do feel a little connection there. Good. I'll take it down. Toe here, the feet out. Knees and toes turn in just for fun, for goodness. And then turn them out. Stay in the position that works better for you. Five breaths. And start moving your right foot down to the right, and your left foot over. So you're going to try and keep the back of your pelvis evenly weighted. And as you do this, notice what happens with your feet. The right foot should be further down the wall than your left. And then I want you to switch so your left foot, everything points more leftwards and your left foot is further down. Oh, my pelvic cap came up. So I'm just noticing where I have some stuckness. Just switch that back and forth a couple of times. You don't have to stay for too long unless you really feel a need to. And then from here, I'm going to get a little bit closer just because I need to. I'm going to take my right toes facing to the right. I'm going to gently nudge and massage with the fibers of the muscles down the inner thighs. There's nothing wrong with you coming back in either. It's fine. I'm just going to keep it there. I'm going to keep this leg bent. I'm going to turn the toes. So they don't go straight up, but they go a little bit diagonal. All right. You're going to have to release the pelvic half for sure. Most, most people. I shouldn't say for sure, but most people. All right. As I inhale, I'm going to press into the wall and soften my joints here, my knees. As I exhale, I'm going to lift the low belly and then do exactly what I did in the spinal articulations. My low back's going to get a little flatter. It's not fully flat, it's flatter. And then I'm going to let my legs come out to warrior two, traditional warrior two. Now as I do this, I feel a little compression here. So what do I do? I inhale, I bend again. And I stretch this leg out a little more as I exhale, lift. Ah, compression's not quite there anymore. So be aware of this. Be aware of the inner thigh. So think about pressing into the wall on the inhale and then exhale, drawing everything in like you could slide it in and then a little lift. There's a little hip pop for you. That's typical for me. If your hip pops and you're like, well, my hips never popped before, get out of this position. 
So here I am, I'm in warrior two. Draw the crown of your head back so it is on top of your soft palate. Center of your throat, you can swallow, fine. Line it up with your heart, all the way down the spine, down into the pelvic floor. Line it up. Inhale, press into the wall, exhale, a little scissor in, a little deflating to the floor. Mindful deflating, though. So in this case, I feel my outer back leg working a lot, and earlier I said my left foot didn't articulate very much. This is very interesting. Okay, let's come to center. We'll do a little goddess on the wall. Maybe for fun, take your heels and your hands to your hip creases and press away. Have a little softness in the elbow so your shoulders aren't totally hiking up. And just notice when you press away, when you inhale, you lift. Exhale, press the back of your pelvis into the floor and then see if you can extend the spine without the pelvis lifting. Stick it to the other side. I've got a little light switch in my way, but I'll work around it. So the left foot's lower than the right here. And I know my left side's always a little bit tighter, just fine. So maybe a little gentle nudging. It's okay, inner thigh. Relax. A lot of people chronically tense up inner thigh muscles. I can't remember which one. I want to say it's the gracilis takes over for the adductor magnus or something like that. Disregard that if you're like, I don't understand what you're saying. But one of your inner thigh muscles tends to be chronically over-tightened. And it takes over for another muscle, and you can kind of feel it. I know I do it. You can feel it. All right. There you go. Inner thigh is all taken care of. Keeping the legs bent, trying to get your knees centered over your toes now, which is more important than an arbitrary foot angle. Take an inhale, let the heart rise, keep the legs bent, press into your outer back foot, it's important, exhale, take a little lift of the low belly, and then maybe I can straighten my leg. No compression here, but if you need to, inhale, reconstitute the pose, exhale, drawing in and up, let the drawstrings come up to the heart, that's fine too. All right, lining up ear with shoulder, so just a different way of thinking of it. Ear with shoulder. Got a bunny over there looking at me kind of funny, like, what are you doing? And every time I inhale, little things change. So I press into the wall, inhale, exhale, do a little scissoring of the legs, a little lifting. And now I feel a little stretch when I do that. It's funny how using the breath to articulate movement within the center of the body changes what the extremities feel and do. And if you're not feeling any of that, this is part of the, the practice about becoming more aware of your body. It does grow. But not if you only do yoga once a month or if you're always looking for a workout. Sometimes it's got to be more slow and more mindful. All right, let's take it to the goddess. Whoosh. And just for fun, take your hands on the inside and then Dip your right shoulder, everything down. If you want to take your feet lower, you can. I'm just going to show you this. Because my knees are now going this way and my toes are going that way. Generally not a, a great thing. If you like it and you enjoy it, I'm not going to say no. But I'm going to line things up here because I know. I only get one set of knees and they, they didn't come out very nice to begin with. So I'm going to string this little bow across my chest. And I might stop right here or I might extend all the way. Now the trick here is you're going to be arching your back, most people. So inhale, lift the heart rather than the low back, and then as you exhale, try to take the tailbone <clears throat> into the body. Simultaneously it points to the wall that you're touching. And then see what happens if you try to initiate a little bit more of a twist with the navel on the exhale, pressing the right leg out and not letting the left knee collapse. If you've had about enough of this, you can take it in. Same idea, so let everything tilt down at once. Take your right hand wherever it wants to go, start to string a bow across your body. Maybe it stops somewhere around here. Encourage your shoulder blades to drop kind of down your body 
and your collarbones to expand, arm can rise out. Inhale, press in to the feet, drop your tail, and then exhale, lifting, a little coiling of the low belly, rising, a little flattening of the spine. The more I flatten my spine, the more I feel a stretch. I'm not saying tuck your tailbone and work those glute muscles, I'm just saying little coiling, a tiny bit of lifting, 5% engagement. Maybe more if you feel like you need it. Okay, to the center, especially because I think I'm going to be attacked by a bunny soon. This is where knees together might feel totally awesome. Now you see how this practice can go into three hours worth of poses on your back, poses on the wall, poses on your back, poses on the wall. But this is just one way to do, I mean, I could do a million poses on the wall, on the back. But I'm just going to leave you with that. And then a good way to end this would be legs up the wall. You don't have to get your butt right up against the wall, but if that's your thing, I like that sometimes. Today, not so much. And then a nice little trick for legs up the wall. I, I don't know if it's really a trick so much. It's just something that I like. Is having the middle of my shins supported and having bunnies jumping behind me. That's the most relaxing part of legs up the wall when I know that there are bunnies frolicking behind my head. So you can stay here for as long as you want. Remember the unconscious desire for many of us, particularly if you are, if you pride yourself and you identify with being a problem solver and I'm always taking action and I am, you know, you're that green light person where you just stand up with that chest out and, and that lower back tends to cave in, pelvis tips forward. Try to pretend like you have a bunny on the front of your pelvis here, just weighing you down gently. It's not being forceful, it's just standing on you. It's just having gravity and allow the gravity to pull you down. If you're the type of person that tends to be a little more fearful, you tend to hold things close, you're a little bit more guarded, you might find the shoulders are lifting, in which case you now have two bunnies, one on either front of your shoulder. You may even take blankets, blocks, heavy objects, sandbags if you have them, and take them across here, over the top. And you know, if a bunny starts to eat your hair, just acknowledge it happily. Let it eat your hair. It's okay. Staying here for as long as you want, letting the video end, pausing the video, and letting everything relax. So the green light in me always likes to have the pelvis pushing forward, taking it down. Breath is automatic now. And from this place, you can rewind the video and do it over again. It's really nice to repeat. And you can find your solace here for the rest of the day.